The Forest fucking sucked. I should have figured. It's a horror movie released in January. Those tend to suck. And I didn't even know this at the time. It's actually PG-13. So it's a PG-13 horror movie released in January. So those really tend to suck. Oh boy. You know, after seeing the trailer, I was excited for it to be honest. I love the idea. I love the setting. It takes place in the suicide forest in Japan. It gave me the vibe of Silent Hill and Fatal Frame. I was really excited for that. And also, Natalie Dormer's in it as a leading uh, role, in a leading role. She's the main character. I mean, after seeing her in the Hunger Games movies where she's basically a cameo, she doesn't really do much in those movies. Now we have her in a leading role, and yeah, I was excited for that. This movie's not even mediocre. This movie actually sucked. After <sighs> three writers. This movie had three, three writers. Three writers. And it still fucking sucked. How do you screw that up? You had a great idea, a great setting. And Nally Dormer, who actually gave her all, all in this, she was good. She was really good. I want to recommend you guys to watch this movie because her, because of her, but it's a waste of time. I don't recommend it. Ugh, she deserves a much better movie than this. Really. Ugh. So, I'm going to spoil the shit out of this movie, guys, mostly because I don't want you guys to see it. So, spoilers. Nally Dormer plays these twin sisters, Sarah, who's a blonde, Jess, who's a brunette. And Jess is the troublemaker. She's the trouble one, mostly because she's been depressed all her life, and Sarah always has to come to her aid. So at this time, Jess decides to go to the suicide forest. So she uh, disappeared into the forest. And the problem with this movie, one of the major problems with this movie, is actually the editing. Oh, God, the beginning... The beginning was very confusing with its editing. At first, you see this woman who's running through the forest. And then, uh, after a couple seconds of that, it shows uh, Sarah waking up from her bed. And then it's like, cut, 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 cut. It shows uh, Sarah waking up from her bed. Cut. Sarah putting uh, clothes in the luggage. Cut. Sarah putting on clothes. Cut. Sarah getting tickets uh, for her plane. Cut. Sarah go to the airport. Cut. And then uh, it does this until she gets to the cab. And that's uh, within the first five minutes. And then after that, while she's in the cab, she has these flat flashbacks of her conversations with the uh, Japanese police uh, uh, officers uh, about the disappearance of her sister uh, who went to the suicide forest and she's like listen your sister's been gone for two days most likely she's dead and Sarah's like no I could feel her I could feel her I know she's still alive and then she uh, has the flashback of her talking with, with her husband about the disappearance of her sister and the father's like uh, and the husband's like, oh, listen, she's done this before. Come on. How about this? If you still feel like this tomorrow, then let's go to Japan and I'll come with you. And uh, But my boss is coming uh, for dinner tonight. So, yeah, we got to concentrate on that. So it shows her uh, and her husband uh, talking with the boss over dinner. And then it finally uh, cuts uh, to her in the cab and then she gets to the hotel. So I was like, do you really have to show all that? Couldn't you just start off with her in the frick, in frickin' Japan? You don't need these flashbacks. I'm pretty sure if she said, listen, my sister's uh, disappeared, I'm trying to look for her. That's all the story we need. Uh, come on. You don't need the first 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure we're smart enough to figure that out. I'm, but here's the thing. If you show the flashbacks of her and her sister, uh, that I'm okay with that. Because that's actually one of the best scenes in the movie. That uh, Natalie Dormer's talking to uh, Natalie Dormer. And uh, what I like is that uh, Sarah and Jess have two different personalities. And it's not like Natalie Dormer just uh, dyeing her hair blonde or uh, brunette. No, uh, she actually has different personalities for each sister. And she did a good job of that. I like the fact that they were talking about the, the grandmother and about the things that they like and all also sex and all that stuff, you know, uh, find uh, common ground, that's good. They actually treat like they're sisters, and I wish there was a bit more of that. So Sarah goes to uh, the this place near the forest, which is kind of confusing. I'm not sure if it's a, a morgue or something like that, but it's a place where they have dead bodies uh, if they ever find dead bodies uh, in the forest. So the dead bodies are stored there. And she goes over there, and uh, she uh, talks with this, uh, eight, uh, this Japanese woman, and she's like, listen, have you seen my identical sister, Jess? And she's like, oh, yeah, she in the basement. She in the basement. Come with me. And I was like, wait, what? What the hell does this mean? Turns out that, yeah, there were dead bodies in the basement. And the basement's kind of creepy. It looks like a tomb with rocks all over the walls and stuff. And we have this one guy who's guarding the room, but uh, doesn't pay attention. He's reading a magazine while listening to music. <laughs> 
So it turns out that Jess is not one of the uh, dead bodies over there. And then uh, Sarah wants to keep going to the forest. So she goes to the hotel and uh, uh, having some uh, live uh, sushi. She ate uh, some live shrimp and some live calamari or something like that. And uh, she wants dead food, but uh, everyone's like, hee hee hee, she, she, uh, she's a medic and she's stupid. <laughs> so she meets up with this another guy who speaks English uh, named Taylor. And he's a journalist from Australia, which kind of confused me. I was like, is he an Australian or he's just an American who works in Australia as a journalist? I'm kind of confused by that, but whatever. He's a cool, go uh, he's a cool guy and uh, the actor's pretty good with him too. And at first he wants to hit on Jess, even though she clearly has a ring on her finger. Uh, but yeah, so they kind of hit it off kind of like a, it's, uh, mostly platonic, I believe. So Sarah uh, talks about her backstory with uh, Taylor, and Taylor wants to do a story on her because uh, he's like, oh, I'm going to the suicide forest, and since you're trying to find your sister, can I do a story on you? So I could get you a guide, and we uh, he could help us try to find your sister. She agrees to this. So Sarah talks about her backstory, and this was a kind of confusing one, to be honest, because she talks about uh, her uh, past when she was living with her grandmother, and uh, her parents were coming from a movie Movie, but uh, they got hit, hit, uh, got killed by a drunk driver. But the visuals and uh, when she was uh, saying what happened didn't really match up, which kind of confused me because she said that <coughs> the drunk uh, driver, which happens to be their neighbor, uh, hit and killed uh, their parents outside. But uh, they go into the basement, and it turns out there were dead bodies there anyway. So I was like, wait, you just said that they got killed by your, a drunk driver outside, but this is in the basement. The, do you mean that the uh, drunk driver crashed into the basement and killed your parents? What are your parents doing over there anyway? Makes no sense. And uh, she said that Jess is the one who saw everything, but um, she uh, and uh, that Sarah clo uh, closed her eyes. That's why Jess was always depressed the entire time. She saw the death of her parents, but then it comes. Uh, but it's like she imagined everything anyway, and and it's the exact location, exact uh, place, and time of the bodies and stuff like that. So I was kind of confused by that. Is uh is is it because Sarah's trying to suppress her memories of her parents' death? She's the one who saw everything, and Jess is not the uh, troubled one. Sarah's the trouble one? I don't know. That The movie got me confused about that. So uh, Sarah agrees with Taylor about the story, and then the next day they go off into the forest along with the guide, and I'm kind of confused about the guide because he's an expert at this, and I'm trying to figure out why. Because I'm like, did someone teach him about the path of the forest? Does uh, Did someone teach him about the right way of the forest? Or this guy is such an expert at uh, going through the forest that he knows exactly which way is uh, good, which way is bad, which way could lead to your doom or something like that. I don't know. But this guy is an expert at this, and I'm kind of confused about that. Probably makes sense to all you uh, Japanese people who know about the suicide forest. And they're like, oh, no, 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 uh, we know about the path of the forest. But to me, I'm like, well, in the movie, it's kind of confusing because, you know, the path, it, it doesn't look like a clear path. It just uh, seems like an ordinary, ordinary forest. And it's not like there were indicators like, okay, there's a uh, paint on the tree. So, you know, okay, the blue path go this way, yellow path go this way, red path go this way, or strings or arrows or some kind of indicator that lets you know you're on the right path. Uh, because it's not like the path is uh, made by a lot of dirt compared to other places or uh, bricks or something like that or rocks or stone or nothing. No. <clears throat> that got me confused. And the only way you know uh, you're near the entrance is that there's this uh, a little part where there's strings all over the branches, which lead you to the person who either wants to commit suicide or wants uh, their friends and family members to stop them from committing suicide or just find them because they lost hope. So that's the only thing I know about the forest is that that part is right next to the entrance. But yeah, um, that... Other than that, I'm kind of confused how the guide is uh, an expert, but whatever, I'll take it, I'll take it. So this, and here's the thing I hate about these horror movies, okay? Why is it that people have to make stupid decisions that would get themselves killed? Or get them in big trouble? Ugh. So Sarah, even though I thought she was a smart person, decides to do this dumbass thing. The guide says, listen, uh, we're in the middle of the forest, it's midday, we really have to go back because we shouldn't be here at nighttime, and if we're stuck here at nighttime, we might go insane and might uh, kill ourselves or kill each other. So Sarah heard this, and then she said, oh wait, Jess's tent is there, woohoo, we found her tent, we found her tent, okay, I'm going to stay right here and wait for Jess. And the guide's like, 
uh, dumbass idea, bitch. Uh, just leave a note. Uh, we'll come back in the morning. If Jess is still alive, then that's good. We'll come back in the morning because I don't want to be here. You shouldn't be here. He shouldn't be here. Otherwise, we all go crazy and kill ourselves or kill each other. But Sarah's like, listen, I appreciate your help, but you could fucking go. I'll stay right here for my sister. And I was like, oh, come on, Sarah. You don't know anything about the force. I'm pretty sure you need the fucking guide. So uh, Taylor's like, huh. You know, I should trust my guy friend since I've known him for many years, but it's Natalie Dormer, man. I mean, she's freaking hot. I know she she is married, but, you know, I, I we're in the forest, you know. Things might happen. We could hook up, you know, or just have sex for one time or something. I don't know, but it's Natalie Dormer. She's hot. You would stay in the forest for her, man. And the guy's like, ah, whatever. It's your fucking loss. Whatever you do, just stay in the fucking tent. Do not move. Don't get it. Don't go anywhere. Stay in the tent. I'll be right back in the morning. Do not move. You hear me? Good. See you in the morning, white people. So yeah, the guy leaves, and he's the only smart one in this movie. Ugh. So Sarah and uh, Taylor decide to stay in the tent, and that's when Sarah starts getting these visions because she's staying too uh, long in the forest. And uh, the guide even told her that uh, she would uh, see a lot of these uh, illusions, mostly because she's depressed. So uh, Sarah keeps having these visions and these uh, dreams. Uh, actually, before uh, she uh, had these uh, illusions in the forest, she had a couple weird dreams. Like there's this one dream where um, she uh, sees her going into the basement and she sees a yellow tent over there. And then she opens up the door to the tent and it shows the little girl version of herself. And then the little girl's face went, ah. And I laughed my ass off when I saw that. Seriously, oh my god! It reminded me of the the dead body, uh, the de faces of the dead bodies from The Grudge. Uh, whenever you see uh, the one of the oh wait, it wasn't The Grudge. The Ring. I'm sorry, it was The Ring. Whenever you uh, see the movie after seven days, then you die. You're like ah. So that was kind of funny. So uh, yeah, after that, then she sees this. I, I admit, the, the setup to this scene was kind of cool. It was when she was at the hotel, and she was turning on the lights, but the lights weren't working that well. But she sees a shadow all the way in the back of the hall, so she decides to come uh, go toward it. And I know the scene, uh, it's uh, pretty predictable. You know something's going to jump out at you. But at the same time, it, the way it was set up was kind of cool. And the atmosphere and the lighting for this scene was uh, kind of awesome, too. So she uh, uh, starts going to the figure, and the figure starts going to her, she was trying to figure out what the fuck it was. And then what do we see? A crazy, ugly-ass old Asian woman who's blind. She's like, ah! And then the daughter comes out. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My my mother, she's blind. I'm sorry about that. Oh, mom, you got to stop scaring people like that. Ah! <laughs> but here's the thing. The movie, for some reason, thinks that part was so scary that had to show clones of that Asian old woman in the forest. Why? It's not scary. It's just goofy. She's like, ah, in the forest. And there's two other versions of her. She's like, ah. And then she jumps out the camera. Ah. So I was like, what the hell is up with that? You don't need that. Ugh. So yeah, Sarah keeps uh, having these uh, visions of the Asian old woman in the forest. And then she decides to leave the tent because she sees something in the forest. So she decides to run after it like a dumb bitch. So she goes after it. And it turns out that it was a creepy Asian uh, schoolgirl who's uh, all uh, dirtied up and stuff. And she asked the Asian schoolgirl questions. And the Asian schoolgirl was like, oh, I know where Miss Jess is. Oh, oh. And then uh, the uh, Sarah's like, wait, what? How do you know about that? The guy told her the guy told her that if you see someone in the forest, chances are that person's not really there. It's just an illusion. But Sarah didn't think about that. So the Asian schoolgirl's like, oh, I'm going to run away now. <laughs> so she runs away, and then Taylor meets up with Sarah, and then they survive the night, and then they uh, decide to leave the tent, even though they're told not to leave the tent in the morning. And uh, Taylor's like, oh, we got to go. Don't worry. We'll meet up with the guide. Uh, he'll probably be at the edge of the mountain anyway, so let's just go down the stream. So as they go down the stream, um, for some reason, Taylor switched directions, but... Uh, that's why Sarah's like, wait, why are you going that way? We just came from there. And uh, Taylor's like, listen, we got to follow the river. And Sarah's like, yeah, the river's going that way. But then Taylor's like, no, Sarah, the river's going that way. And Sarah's like, but you came from that way. That makes no sense. Then she looks down, and then it turns out that the river's actually going that way. 
So she was very confused, and she's wondering if uh, she's uh, being fucked with by the forest. So later on, she uh, uh, decides that uh, Taylor is not being truly honest with her and decides that Taylor should give uh, up uh, his phone. And then uh, when she checked out the phone, it turns out there were pictures of Jess, and which made her uh, really, really angry with uh, Taylor. She believes he's the bad guy. And I'm wondering, that's the thing. I was like, is the Force just warping that uh, into her mind? Like, it's not a picture of Jess. It's a picture of something else, and she just thinks that it's Jess or something like that. I'm trying to figure out how the Force works. So, uh, Sarah doesn't trust that Taylor anymore. She runs away, and then she falls into a cave. And <laughs> in this cave, she meets up with the Asian school girl again, and she doesn't think it's very weird or anything. And the Asian school girl is like, Oh, Miss Jess is in the uh, cave! Ha ha ha! Just follow me! Follow me! Hee hee hee! And she had this creepy-ass smile on her, uh, and you haven't seen her like that before. Before, she's kind of concerned and very uh, sullen and stuff, but now she's like, hee hee So you know something's up, but Sarah doesn't know what's up. So Sarah decides to run after uh, this crazy Asian schoolgirl, and then the crazy Asian schoolgirl stops at the end of the cave, and then Sarah's like, oh my god, what's up, what's up? So she shows her camera, uh, she wants to show the light, so she slowly pans it up, and then shows the creepy Asian schoolgirl's demonic form, and she looks like Reagan from the exorcist the demonic version of her seriously it's just hilarious it's goofy she's like hey, 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 hey. so yeah basically she becomes a deadite so sarah uh, runs away from her and i gotta say that i i kind of like this shot they did this twice in the movie every time that sarah runs away from some ghostly image um, or a ghostly figure, uh, it, the camera focuses on her face as she's running, but in the negative space behind her, you do see the ghostly figures, and it seems like they're actually floating and always a step behind her. It's not like they're going farther, farther away. No, they're just following her, and that's a very cool effect, even though she's running. And they did this twice in the movie, and I did like these two shots. So Sarah uh, meets up with Taylor again, and then um, uh, she trusts him for some reason, and Taylor gives her a knife, and then, uh, after that, it turns out that Sarah, uh, got, got a couple cuts on her hand, so she decides to check it out, and it turns out there were maggots all over her hands and the cuts in her arms, and that the maggots are going into, uh, deeper into her arms, so that's why she's about to take the knife and about to stab herself, but then, uh, Taylor said something, and then, uh, that stopped, uh, uh, Sarah, and then she realized, oh my god, I was about to kill myself because there were no maggots in my arms. So I guess I kind of like that reference to, um, what's it called, uh, uh, Poltergeist? Well, the original one, anyway, <laughs> with the maggots and the meat and stuff. But, uh, yeah, uh, but she, uh, Sarah was just like, what the fuck is going on? I'm uh, having these visions and stuff. So Taylor app apparently happens to stumble upon a cabin with a working radio or a with uh, just a radio anyway, and Sarah uh, finds this very, very confusing. She's like, wait, how the hell did you stumble onto a cabin in the middle of the forest? Huh. So Sarah doesn't really trust Taylor anymore, so she uh, hears these voices in her head as uh, telling her to kill Taylor, so she kills Taylor with a knife, and uh, Taylor's like, listen, it's the forest that's giving you these visions. Ugh. And then Sarah uh, sees this door, she opens the door, then she goes deeper into it, and then she sees that it's her old basement uh, back when she was living with her grandmother and her parents are dead. She actually sees the dead bodies of the parents, that the father shot the mother with a shotgun. And um, that's what I'm confused about. I was like, wait, I thought she said she didn't see this, that Jess did. Unless she's seen this from Jess's point of view, or she actually saw the death of her parents and Jess didn't. So that kind of got me confused. So then the dead body of the dad becomes like a zombie and starts chasing after Sarah and grabs her by the arm. Sarah defends herself by stabbing uh, the uh, dad's uh, hand off. And then she jumps out of the cabin and then poof, it just shows Jess. And I was very confused. My best friend and I were like, wait, what the hell does this mean? Yeah, Jess just came out of nowhere. Her face just popped out onto the screen. She was looking very concerned and uh, for like 30 seconds were very confused about what happened. Then she starts running away. And I'm like, wait, what? Then it shows Sarah uh, running away from the cabin and she's running away from the, all the ghosts and which was a very cool shot, I have to admit. And then uh, it shows that uh, Sarah finds uh, where Jess is and Jess is running towards the entrance of the forest. And at the same time, the guide, Sarah's husband and a bunch of police officers we're in the forest. They decide to call it off because it's nighttime. They decide to come back earlier in the morning to just to find a Sarah and Jess. 
So, Jess happens to uh, make it past the entrance, but Sarah got stopped by the Asian schoolgirl right before she got to the entrance. And then it turns out that <gasps> Sarah's dead the entire time. Nah, not exactly. She died when she uh, stabbed herself in the cabin. Because at the time, she was having the vision of her zombie uh, dad uh, grabbing her, but then it turned out that she was actually just cutting her own arm. So because of that, she bled to death. And uh, Sarah, because Sarah just realized that she's a ghost now, and the uh, Asian schoolgirl, for some reason, is looking very sad about this, then you see these hands coming out of the ground and grabbing Sarah and bringing her uh, into hell. So it's basically like that scene from Drag Me to Hell. And yeah, uh, Sarah's dead, and she's in hell right now. And then because of that, Jess is like, wait, I can't feel my sister anymore. <gasps> Sarah, she's dead. Oh, no. And because of this, she felt upset about it, and then she uh, gets taken away by the police uh, along with the husband. And then the only uh, person remaining in the parking lot of the entrance of the forest is the guide. Then the guy looks back into the forest. He sees something coming over there, and he's like, oh, my God. Oh. And then it shows the dead body of Sarah jumping into the camera. So, yeah, that's how the movie ends. And what the fuck was that about? <laughs> Seriously, oh, my God. This movie... Uh, this movie sucked. And also, it didn't make any sense. Also, the ending made no sense. Where the fuck was Jess the entire time? Was she uh, right next to the freaking entrance the entire time? Where the fuck was she? She's been in the forest for almost six days. How did you survive uh, six days in the forest? Uh, why, uh, the Sa why Sarah, Taylor, and the guy couldn't even find you? Why the guy, Sarah's husband, and the policeman couldn't even find you if you're that close to the freaking forest? Where the hell were you? Why weren't you at the tent? Where the hell were you the entire time in the forest? What were you doing in the forest? It made no sense. Uh, is it like the equivalent exchange, like we need a sacrifice of Sarah uh, to save you or something like that? It made no sense. Oh my god. The scares suck. The story sucks. Oh, the ending fucking sucked. You had three writers, three writers, and you still screwed this up. It made no sense. I was expecting a decent horror movie, and this is what I get. Ugh. And you know what's sad? The next horror movie I was actually looking forward to is The Boy, uh, starring uh, Lauren Cohen from uh, The Walking Dead. Turns out it's in January. <laughs> No, I just realized it's a January movie. I really hope it's decent. That's what I'm hoping for. This movie really sucked. I mean, the trailer for The Conjuring 2. I didn't like The Conjuring. I thought it was just decent at best. But I'm not a big fan of it. I thought it was overrated. But even the trailer for The Conjuring 2 is scarier than uh, this uh, piece of crap. Oh, God. I don't, rec I don't recommend this movie. It made no sense. The scares are bad. Ugh. But Natalie Dormer was great. I just want her to get a better movie. So that's all how I feel about the forest, guys. Write down in the comments below how do you, uh, how do you feel about the forest if you've seen it. Even though I highly doubt that you've seen it, and I don't want you to see it anyway. Is it good? Is it bad? Let me know, guys. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you like to subscribe, there's an annotation here for subscribing. So until next time, guys. See you later, and thank you for watching.